what proof of reality do we have outside our own senses and experiences? Do you think there's life after death? Nine days until the birthday? Can you know the wax? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I hope it is so long. <laughs> okay, we're pondering the imponderables today. <laughs> Focusing on the Berkey wax nine days out. Okay, you guys, here it is. You ready for the forecast for the yeah. day of the race? The forecast is out. Wow. The 10 day forecast is now solid with a high of 40 degrees. Mm. What does that tell you? What's the wax? 40 degrees. Well, what's the night before going to be like? Oh, oh, now you're starting to ask probing questions. What do you think, Amy? What's the wax? 40 degrees. Warm stuff. What, what's what's Are you the guys weather? <laughs> what's the weather leading up to? You guys are doing this wrong. You're asking as though you were actual waxers, not uh, dead panic master skiers who are putting a week of your vacation time and a measurable proportion of your savings into doing the Berkey. 56 kilometers of pain and suffering from wave two or three or four or five guaranteed mashed potatoes. Crowds, the crowds, the parking. People are going to panic. People are already panicking. We're getting questions about the Berkey Wax, and the forecast is warm. But here you go. I want to run through it just briefly and remind you that right now, this morning, according to Jeff Tumbleson, it was minus 12 Fahrenheit in Hayward. Mm. Okay? Uh, there's a high today of about 4 Fahrenheit, um, minus 15 tonight, high of 16, low of 10, Brief blip up to freezing, 32. Just tagging it for a minute on Saturday, down to 6. High of 19, low of 11. High of 30 with a low of 12 on Monday. High of 20 with a low of minus 3 on Tuesday. High of 14, low of minus 2 on Wednesday. High of 24, low of 15 on Thursday. And then comes the day before the Berkey with a high of 36. Mm. And... Temperatures above freezing from noon until five. Five hours. Just above freezing on it's, Friday. It's not a whole lot. No. And it'll probably also freeze up overnight. Yeah, then it goes down to 23. And it skyrockets from a temperature of about 25, 26 degrees at start time to crossing the freezing line. We're talking in Hayward now at 11 a.m. So a lot of people are nearing the finish. And then uh, cresting, freezing, and climbing up to a high of as much as 40, but not until like 3 p.m. Okay. So, so at noon, they're still saying, you know, mid-30s. Okay. And so only an hour of above freezing temps. So you might want to wax for colder than it looks You might like want to. Yeah, you might want to wax for colder than that daytime high. That's actually, that's fairly astute. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Um... No new snow in the forecast between now and then. Are we looking at Clister or Hard Wax? Sounds like Hard Wax, unless they're already on Clister. They're not. There was new snow last night, cold and dry. It's well packed, hard. There's 10 to 12 inches of base on the course everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, for Kick Wax, there, there's a little glaze in the track, but it's not hard to get Kick. Mm -hmm. So... It's too early to pick the wax. We are looking at the very early stages of transformation on the race day. We're probably not looking at overall warmth in the snowpack, and that place is legendary for having a deeply refrigerated snowpack. And we've got cold, we've got cold temps, we've got below zero Fahrenheit readings Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, I think it's a little early to panic based on a daytime high of 40. I think it's a little early to panic based on anything that has to do with weather forecasting nine days out. Within about five days, then we can start to zero in on what that trend is. But that could actually break either way really hard. We could, we could go, based on the trend, warming from Wednesday on, Friday could top out at 46, and it could actually transform. 
there could be a little a little clipper system that comes through and dumps fresh cold snow at 20 degrees Fahrenheit the night before. Hard to say, um, but I think it's a little early to uh, to start panicking based on the warm forecast or getting out the wet skis or planning on clickster based on what we see right now. If this was the east, we would be excited for a nice day. <laughs> in the Midwest, they will panic, and I, I predict if this forecast holds, the course will be closed on Friday <laughs> based on the temperature going above freezing because they will be convinced they're going to lose it. Yeah. Um, and people will start uh, planning to bring in their ice fishing shanties in the next six weeks, which means the ski season is over. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, though, anything in Vermont where there's above about an inch and a half of snow is considered pretty good skiing. So. Yeah. Yeah, um, those Berkey those Berkey folks need to come spend a winter out here to realize how good they've got it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, last time we were out there for a warm Berkey, we actually arrived to stable cold conditions on Wednesday. Went for a great ski with Jeff. That was, I don't even remember what year it was. It was several years ago. It was very warm. 2016, 2017? I don't even know. Uh, but it, it was a slug, slug fest of a wet day. But that was prefaced with pouring rain on Friday afternoon. And it still started a little colder than we expected, but it, but it broke further. In the transition before the rain started, we had great feelings on Star VF4 paraffin. Really, really good. Toco LF Molly base was a knockout. Really, really, like crushed our base test. Um, we don't sell it. I don't know if you can get it anymore, but if you got any old Toco LF Gray, I would keep that around. If the forecast holds and the temperatures start in the mid-20s and go to 40 for the high and cross the freezing toward the end of the race, uh, I think that Toco LF Molly with uh, the Star VF4 is a, is a great place to be. And the standard powder solutions are going to hold really well. That Rex 77 would probably be good. The 98? The 98? would be a little warm. I mean, we would need to get that in Jeff's hand to test. Maybe we need to send him some yeah. so we can get some testing. But it's going to be a little cold for the testing. He would need to run in heat of the day on Friday. Mm -hmm. But he could do that. Uh, but LVR, if you've got it, we can't yeah. get it anymore. We're out. But that's that's yeah. a very, very good bet. We have two day. blocks left. <laughs> two blocks. Two LVR blocks. We should hoard them. I've already got my stash okay. for a reason. I'm not selling it. Okay. Uh... That's all we really know. Maybe it would be a good idea to have the start Oslo kickers in your box as a base, considering the opportunity for transformation and grooming cycles in the snow without getting refreshed if it actually doesn't snow in the next nine days. And they groom that start to finish like four or five times in that time period. There's a great chance of a level of transformation and glaze setting up that would indicate the use of something with a little clister material in it as a base and then the roadie top line the the b17 vo vps are super well proven waxes in that snow jeff's been running those all the time up to vxps even in significantly colder conditions so if you want to buy four waxes get the oslo blue and get the minus one minus seven and the violet top lines those would be good other ideas well, if it is warmer, how about burying some Oslo Violet? Yeah, Oslo Violet would would be real kicky, very strong kick. Mm -hmm. And the question is, can you keep the speed high? That depends on ski height and pocket shape. But it would be safe for the second half. Maybe kind of. Might just be pushing a wheelbarrow for the first half. Yeah. It's always a question with the Berkey. Do you want first half skis or second half skis? There's a distinct break point at double O, and the race has two halves, and they, they ski differently. The successful races are always uh, waxing for the first half. No. No? The successful strategy is second half, for sure, over and over again. At, le at least in the elite. You can't win with poor second half skis. Um, and I, I think it's a question of satisfaction also with uh, skiers throughout the waves. If they've got good skis in the second half and they're passing people on the lake, it's a great feeling. Even if you've suffered a little bit early on, if your skis are good at the end, you finish upbeat, and finishing upbeat means you're grabbing places in the tail end of the race. And that's, you can, 
when you start losing time at the end of a marathon, you lose a lot of time. <laughs> if you're yeah. picking up time at the end of a marathon and your entire physical output is being buoyed by good feelings. That roadie multigrade violet, which I know you hate, hate might it. be good. It might, like, yeah. I think that works well in, in that kind of mixed wax range. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right, it does. Uh, that's a that's a good one, but would you put it on untested? I would rather put it Well, I would on. test it, but I would... But, okay, so here's the practical consideration is when? Well, you got to test it before you before the start. Well, but it's starting at like, what, I know, but you go as warm no, as you can. Eight. No, it's between 8 and 9. You go as warm as you can, and then maybe cover it if, if it's too I'll small. tell you, if I had a ski with Oslo Blue and a ski with Rhodey Multigrade Violet, mm -hmm. both covered with minus 1, minus 7. Yeah. And even if the Oslo Blue is just a little bit draggier early mm -hmm. on, if, I, if I'm concerned about keeping kick on the hills in the second half of the course, I'm going to pick that one. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Well, you go ahead and say. How about we do the race and you do the multi-grade violin and I'll do the Oslo Blue. Got the Stowe Derby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it for the imponderables for today. Maybe we can revisit this a little later on. I'm kind of disappointed that neither of you panicked based on a 40 degree high forecast and you both asked what the temperature the night before is. Because we've had trickier days out east every single race this year. <laughs> every single practice this year. That's fair. We haven't had like, easy waxing ever. No. All right. Good. Yeah.